A small conspiracy theory. Somewhere in the constellation Cassiopeia, there once lived an alien who was in love. And also this alien must have been very rich, because this wedding proposal was an investment to be seen across the entire galaxy. You don't know what I'm talking about? Let me show you. And now, the cables. Ugh. It's been a long time since we had the red light in the videos. The setup is completely done. PhD is calibrating right now and the telescope is pointing at the heart nebula. So this nebula is known for two main reasons. At first, the actual fitting name. There are many objects out there in deep space with names that need a lot of imagination to see them in the objects. But I think this is the first time that the object actually looks as it sounds, which is astonishing when you call it the Heart Nebula. The second reason why the Heart Nebula is very famous is its gigantic size. This nebula can easily be photographed with only 200 millimeters in combination with the Sol Nebula right next to it. With this configuration I can't get the nebula completely in the frame. That's why I'm constructing a mosaic image. This night is actually the third night. You may have seen if you watched the Q&A video. I shot the first two panels a few weeks ago and now the next clear night. At least I hope so. And the third panel is coming in right now, it's the bottom right half, the fish head nebula. The mount is aligned, the scope is focused, PhD has calibrated as I can. It's funny because you can actually hear PhD calibrating because the mount is moving slightly. And when it's calibrated all I can hear is because it's trying to correct every error possible. Seeing is just a little bit bad tonight, but the transparency looks pretty good. I can see Vega and Cygnus right above me, which is always nice to see. And the constellation for tonight, Cassiopeia. Here's the premise on the mosaic building. I've planned these nights in Stellarium beforehand, using the camera field of view feature. I constructed a bigger rectangle out of four smaller ones, the actual field of view of the camera. I've entered the coordinates of the center of the third night into the object catalog of APT with the power of plate solving the telescope moved there right now. And just to show you, the image right now is taken already and the coordinates are already given, the approximate coordinates the telescope thinks it's pointing at. And using near solving, I, I never used near solving before, but this is awesome. I set up plate solve 2 and with one press on solve, it only takes literally 4 seconds to solve this image, which is incredible. Usually I had to wait until for every solve exactly between 30 and 60 seconds, but this is amazing. And now we can see a lot of stars in here and I already know this here is the center of the Heart Nebula. These three stars are pretty obvious to, to look at, at least to me. The camera is having some trouble cooling to minus 15, but I hope we will get that tonight. The problem with the mosaic image, if your image framing is just a little bit off, you have to cut away so much of the final image to get a proper rectangle. And to check again, if I'm doing it right, and this is my first time building a mosaic, I don't know if I'm doing it right. But the image is solved, I can now click on show. And the, as you see in the bottom left, the field of view size, orientation and telescope and image position have been sent to a Stellarium. And now... Oh, damn it. I just moved it, hang on. Show. 
and you can see right here. I hope this is as precise as it says to be. This is the framing for the first night. I think the two panel mosaic I have right now stops right about here. So there is enough overlap to align the stars. And of course the famous, is it called the fish head nebula? I don't know. Yes, of course, this could be a fish. But this framing for tonight, if this would be a little bit off, and I think the distance here looks good, I think this, I think this is the proper distance. So image framing, very important. And, and I think I got it down tonight, fingers crossed. I think this airplane up there is going to pass right through the heart nebula. And I'm taking the first five minute test exposure now. And the graph looks pretty good. I changed its scale, it's now in actual pixels of this image. And I think the crop factor stretches the 240 millimeters of the guide scope to almost close to the actual imaging telescope, which is quite good because if this would be the case, and I think it is the case, I haven't, I haven't calculated it yet, but a tiny notch in the graph, for example over here, this error was not even one pixel strong, let's say. And one pixel in this image is nothing. So as long as the graph stays like this, and, and I'm pretty sure it will because the conditions look good, I will have no problem with unsharp stars tonight. I will have to refocus the telescope at maybe 2 a.m. when it's cooled down. But let's look at this image. 300 now. Whoa. Alright, I'm actually pretty surprised because this much nebulosity. Here's what you can expect from a camera like this. Unless you're imaging the Orion Nebula, for example. This much nebulosity, and this is the stretched image. Let me remind you, this is the linear image. The stretched version looks like this. You almost can't see anything, just... I think this is the fish head and the center of the heart right here. You can't see much more, I really have to look hard. This is what you can expect from a sensitive camera like this. The, fit, the raw fit files don't look awesome. And even the edited files, the single frames, don't look awesome. But the magic is happening in stacking. Building the first two panels of the mosaic was pretty easy, in Pixel Sight at least. I had to look up some things, but I really hope that the framing tonight will be on point, because I don't want to cut away large areas of the actual heart, which I have to if this fails. If the error is pretty drastic, I think I will repeat this night with a better image framing to get the full heart in this four panel mosaic image. I think I will start the imaging plan, go upstairs, cover all the windows so no stray light is going to get to the telescope. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the night. I will I think I will refocus at maybe 1 or 2 a.m. because it's gonna cool down eventually and the scope is gonna contract. The entire material of the scope is gonna contract and the focus will be off. Only by a tiny notch, you can see it using the bath of mask, but it will be off and I will have to refocus. <laughs> the funny thing is the fourth panel is only to complete the whole image, but there's no nebulosity in there as far as I've seen. It's only adding stars and background sky to get the full rectangle. I've told you in the Q&A video that I'm going to study something else very soon. The term I'm very excited about this is a very loose term in my videos, I, I suppose, but I am very excited about this because the next subject I'm studying is called Optical Engineering and Image Processing. I think I have to say nothing more. My name is Tim, I'm an Astro Addict. Stay tuned for the four panel mosaic image of the Heart Nebula. I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.
very loose term in my videos, I, I suppose, but I am very excited about this because... Sunny! <laughs> Hallo! Was ist los? Komm her! Hallo! She, she, she must have seen the open door and wandered in. <laughs> I almost got a heart attack as the door opened right now with a scratching noise. What's wrong? Hi! I know what she wants here, but you're not getting it this time. So, Sunny, up, los, raus. I hope she didn't snag any cables on the telescope. It's not here. Uh, let me close the door. She's looking for the... She's looking for the small hand pump I use for cleaning the telescope. I annoyed her with that a few days ago and now she's been all obsessed with this small rubber toy. And now she's looking everywhere to find it. And I think if she finds it, I will have to buy a new one.